Hello everyone and welcome to today's Digital Journeys. In this episode, we are going to hear from Trace Armstrong and Aaron Robinson as they discuss migrating Lotus Notes databases to SharePoint, whether it's SharePoint online or on-premise. They will also discuss some of the benefits of SharePoint online versus on-premise. So with that, I turn it over to Trace. Thanks, Jerry, for having me back. Uh, I'm here today with Aaron Robinson, who is a senior architect on our Microsoft team. And we're going to be discussing how to migrate your Lotus Notes applications and databases to Microsoft SharePoint. As I said, I'm here with Aaron Robinson. Aaron, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing I'm doing well. I'm just happy to be here with you today. Absolutely, man. Uh, tell everybody, listen, where are you from and how long have you been in the Microsoft consulting space? Yeah, so I live in the Baltimore, Maryland area. I live right outside of Baltimore. And I've been working in the Microsoft space for probably 10 years now. Um, the Microsoft Online, um, or 365 rather, for the past six years. Very cool. Well, what we're talking about here today is this manufacturing customer uh, that we've been working with on migrating their Lotus Notes databases to SharePoint. So. First of all, maybe for the uninitiated, uh, what is a Lotus Notes database? How is it structured? What does it look like? Sure. So Lotus Notes, it is primarily, um, it's a database where information is stored, but that information is generally stored in the form of documents. And these documents are organized in um, a template in a, or in a form of a template. So um, as you're uploading documents, you can choose what kind of template uh, that document is going to inherit. And all of the columns and other um, attributes about that template template would be um, inherited by this particular document. And this is how um, all the information is pretty much structured in the same way where you have these documents or these pages that are uploaded. Um, they have these fields that are associated to all of these documents. And then you also have what's called pages. And what you can do with this, you have all of these pages that you can have information about a particular piece of information. Let's say it's a standard operating procedure of some sort. Well, on this page, you might have fields and other types of um, tables and other types of information stored on this page about your particular standard operating procedure. And then you can drop links to the actual document where that SOP is stored, clicking on that link, you can be able to open the document directly on the page. So I kind of like to think of Lotus Notes as a, um, it's, it's kind of like a notepad application where you can store information. Now, there's a lot of different ways um, or uh, different methods that might be used in, in terms of how data would be organized. But in general, you have your pages, you have your fields, and then you have your links. And then on top of that, these documents and this, this information, they're all stored in databases. So you can create all these databases and these databases can be unique to whatever the template configuration is. That allows you to be able to upload documents and that's where it's able to inherit all of this information. And then you have views. So these views are where you can go in and see all of your records, the way that they're organized. You can create different various views so you can see your information organized in a number of different ways. So you have a number of columns on this particular view, um, organize it, you can group it, you can sort, and you can even filter. So that's that's primarily the structure of your Lotus Notes database. Some like to think of it as kind of an unstructured database because you're really just dropping your documents in. And these documents, they are the record as opposed to uh, maybe a SQL database where your data is kind of what drives that row of information in this particular case, it would be the document. And that's primarily how um, a Lotus Notes database is structured. Absolutely. Thank you for that great explanation of it. Uh, yeah. One thing that is challenging is, is that most Lotus Notes databases are living on servers that are way out of support. And so while your Lotus Notes may still be working, it is vulnerable to security issues, which is influencing the need to migrate these uh, to another place that is more secure and more technologically up to date. So with that in mind, what are the challenges because of all the features that you just mentioned 
that you are going to face as you prep for any type of Lotus Notes migration, whether you're going to SharePoint or Azure or some other solution? Sure. So because of the fact that the information that is stored there is somewhat unstructured, again, meaning I have my documents and I have fields, I have rich text fields, I have links that might be, I have drop downs, all of these type of fields might be, um, they're on this page. And this information is what you're trying to migrate to another to another database that generally follows a more structured format. So what this causes is for you to spend more time in figuring out how you want to map your data back and forth. I have these rich text fields and you want to know, well, how are these fields going to transition or convert when I move the data over to another database that has more relationship and, and it's more designed um, to hold data uh, within roles as opposed to the document not being that leading record. Um, how am I going to keep the, the structure of my current pages where I have all these pages and all these documents that are linked inside of these pages and all these fields that are part of this page. And I need to be able to drop that into another database. And when it, uh, once it's dropped, I want to be able to render that information in a similar fashion. Um, your challenge comes in because you really have to think create, uh, you have to, you have to be very creative in the way that you're thinking in terms of how you're going to structure this in the new environment because it's definitely not a one-to-one. -one. It's not a field-to-field, -field, document to document. It's, it's, it's once you move this data over, now you're trying to figure out how to reorganize this information in this new platform so that it can look similar or um, uh, give you some sort of familiarity to the user so that they're not feeling that they are learning something all over again, but trying to give them something uh, to lessen that learning curve, to lessen the amount of training and give them that feeling that they can actually use this new platform. Um, and so that is definitely one of the major challenges of moving this data. Um, and not only are you just moving the data over, you have to remember you're moving documents over too, and you're trying to keep all the metadata in the way that they are. So um, using a particular tool, sometimes a tool that's using is not enough. You might need to use some other um, migration functions or other migration tools to kind of um, help out or to, or to kind of supplement um, the weaknesses of whatever the tool that you might be using. So it really does take a sense of creativity. You can definitely do it, but you have to make sure you've thought through that entire process. You have to make sure you've thought through the structure of the data. You have to make sure you've thought through how the documents are going to be stored and how you're going to access those documents and how you're going to tie everything back together once you move it over. So those are those are definitely some of the challenges that you definitely will run into. You always want to make sure you've planned it out well before you actually start that journey. Absolutely. It's a lot of challenges. And I love that you use the word. It takes a lot of creativity to move this data because that yeah. is probably the yeah. best way to put it is creativity. Yeah. Uh, one last question here. Uh, we are in this particular instance doing a migration to an on-premise SharePoint server. So from this point forward, let's focus specifically around challenges of getting it to SharePoint. Uh, what are some key differences between SharePoint online and on-premise that make migrating out of Lotus Notes either similar or different? The SharePoint on-prem, um, the, the, the first thing that jumps out is the fact that it's on-premise, which means that it is installed locally or locally on your servers, which means that you have an infrastructure, which means that you have a cost that goes along with that, right? So you have to uh, maintain the servers, you have to patch the servers, you have to continue to do updates um, and, and spend time monitoring. So that's cost on resources, that's cost on material. Um, and so that's definitely, although you have more control, which would be kind of the pro, you have more control of your data and the information that you are uh, managing within your environment. At the same time, there's a cost that's associated to that, whereas in SharePoint Online, all of that uh, from a server perspective, um, a capacity perspective, all of that is stored in the cloud. Um, and so the user or the client or the organization doesn't have that piece of or that cost associated to it. Um, some of the other things um, would definitely be uh, certain features that you don't have uh, that you uh, 
that are extended in the SharePoint Online, such as search. Um, search becomes easier to do. And because it's in, uh, in SharePoint Online, um, search is kind of across the entire platform. So it's not just in the SharePoint world, but that same search can work on some of the other applications that's in 365. So they've made the search a lot more robust and they've also made it easier to filter to find what you're looking for. Um, On-prem does still have very similar search capabilities, uh, but it's not quite as robust as it is as you move to a cloud. Um, and another big piece is when it comes to extending the functionality of a on-prem SharePoint environment, well, we have to remember SharePoint, um, as much as it's a collaborative platform, it's also a development platform. You can build applications. You can build workflow in your automating processes. Well, SharePoint by itself um, has some okay out-of-the-box tools that you can use to do some of that automation and then do some of that development. But a lot of times you need to use third-party tools to extend that functionality to uh, develop or create more complex forms or to facilitate more complex workflows, or you have to have a, a particular type of skill set to be able to build um, applications um, with, Share, with SharePoint on-prem. And SharePoint Online, um, a lot of that also applies to online. However, SharePoint Online is also a part of a bigger family of applications in what's called the Microsoft 365 platform. So you also have tools that are already available, kind of, um, they, they, of course they fall within the licensing structure, but depending on the structure you've selected, you might already have access to some of those other apps that you can use to extend your functionality. So that means you might have a SharePoint environment, you may have a SharePoint site or a SharePoint this, you need to build a form for it. Well, you can go and utilize some of the other tools that are integrated, such as Power Apps or Power Automate and some of the other tools there to help you extend that functionality. Um, and they, these tools are also what they call uh, low code to no code, which just means that they've made it much easier for you to be able to build these forms a little bit quicker um, if needed. Uh, obviously, there's still some coding that's involved, but these tools are readily available. So that integration of SharePoint Online and a lot of these other tools, um, I believe, is, is what makes it, it, it definitely separates it from um, your on-prem SharePoint environments. Absolutely. And I would say the one tension that you have to manage is, is particularly with this partner, if you have 20 years worth of Lotus Notes database information, uh, you probably could have thousands of documents within a, a database. And with on-premise, you have to think through creating multiple SQL Server database instances to accommodate the amount of data you have coming in. So what everything you just said on top of that is stuff you have to keep track of from an on-premise perspective. So. Well, great. Well, thank you, Aaron, for talking about this. We'll be back uh, with part two in this series on collaboration and workspace productivity as we do a deeper dive into some of the creativity of migrating a Lotus Notes uh, database to SharePoint online or on-premise. Thanks for listening. Thanks again, Trace and Aaron, for the discussion today. As always, feel free to like and share this podcast. Stay tuned for episode two of this discussion.